One of the most frequently asked questions from clinicians has to do with percentile scores. The confusion on this issue typically arises because there are two types of percentile scores. Tests typically report either one or the other, and it's sometimes difficult to tell which. However, these two types of percentiles have different properties and communicate different things. Therefore, it's important to realize which percentile a test is reporting and what it means. In this session, I will go through the basis of each type of percentile score and how they are interpreted. Let's begin. First, we need to define two terms which unfortunately have very similar labels. The first is normal distribution. This is a distribution that reflects a normal or bell-shaped curve. When a curve is bell-shaped, the mean is at the center of the curve. The standard deviations are equally spread on each side of the mean and have a fixed relationship to the mean. Therefore, the percentage of scores between the mean and each standard deviation is the same for every single normal curve. For example, for a normal curve, 68% of the scores lie between positive and negative one standard deviation. 16% of scores lie below negative one standard deviation, and 16% lie above positive one standard deviation. Again, this is true for every normal curve. Two standard deviations accounts for 95% of all scores. Only 2.5% of scores lie below negative two standard deviations, and 2.5% lie above positive two standard deviations. The second piece of essential terminology is normative distribution. The similarity between the terms normative distribution and normal distribution can be a source of confusion. They are not the same thing. A normative distribution is a distribution of test scores that have been gathered from a representative sample of test takers. This distribution may or may not be normal in shape. Let's take a look at some properties of a normative distribution. This example comes from the vocabulary awareness subtest of the TILS. In this particular example, the normative distribution is represented as a box and whiskers plot. The white box indicates the score range for one standard deviation above and below the mean. The bars, or whiskers, indicate the full extent of the score range. Here we can see a couple of things. First, the groups show higher scores on average with age. This is expected for skills like vocabulary that develop with age. At some ages, the spread around the mean is fairly even. These normative distributions are marked with blue arrows. At these specific ages, the normative distribution approximates a normal distribution. As children get older, they tend to know more and more of the words that are on the test. Their means get higher, but more importantly, look at the spread of scores represented by the whiskers. There are less scores above the one standard deviation boxes than there are below. In fact, this becomes more uneven with age. This is not a property specific to the tills. It is a property of many tests that measure skills that develop with age. These two types of percentile scores commonly used by tests are anchored to either a normal distribution or the test normative distribution. These two types of percentiles are referred to as percentile ranks or NCE percentiles. In the next slides, we will consider the relation between these percentile scores and the distributions they are anchored to. First, let's consider NCE percentiles. NCE stands for Normal Curve Equivalent. As you might imagine from the name, this means that the percentiles are anchored to the normal curve. These scores are actually independent of the test normative distribution. Let's look at how this works. Here we make use of an online normal curve calculator. There are many of these available on the web if you'd like to try this out yourself or if you want to confirm that a test of your own is providing NCE percentiles. 
Notice the values in the yellow box. For this particular calculator, we set the mean for this normal curve to 100 and the standard deviation to 15. This way our normal curve has the same scale as the standard scores for a test. Next we ask the calculator to provide the percent area under the normal curve that is below the mean of 100. This is in the second yellow box. This should be 50% for a normal curve. In this slide, we see that our intuition is correct. We see here that half, or 0.5 of the area under the curve, falls below a score of 100. In this example, we have asked for the percent of the curve that falls below a score of 85. This is one standard deviation below the mean. The calculator tells us that 0.1587, or approximately 16%, falls below the score. In this last example, we have asked for the percent of the curve that falls below a score of 76. We can see that this value is 0.0548, or 5% rounded. As you've noticed, all of these NCE percentiles have been calculated without reference to actual test scores by actual test takers. These percentile scores are based solely on the normal distribution. If a test doesn't specify that it's providing NCE percentiles, you can usually tell by looking at the relationship between the standard scores and the percentile scores in the test manual. This fictional example is laid out like many normative test tables. You can see that particular raw scores correspond to particular standard scores for the subtests in this example. These are scaled as subtest scores with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. We can also see from this table that there is a fixed relationship between the standard scores and the percentiles regardless of where the raw score distributions are for the individual subtests. Here you can see some of the corresponding values that are so familiar to those of you who have given a lot of tests. You may even have these memorized. For example, for an NCE percentile, a mean of 10 will always correspond to the 50th percentile. A score of 7, which is one standard deviation below the mean, will always correspond to the 16th percentile. A score of 13, which is one standard deviation above the mean, will always correspond to the 84th percentile. Since the NCE percentiles are based on a normal curve rather than an actual distribution of test scores, the NCE and the standard scores provide identical information, just in two different formats. This leads us to our last point concerning the NCE percentiles. These percentiles are always normally distributed, even if the normative distribution of the test itself, or subtests, is not normal. Now, we'll turn our attention to percentile ranks. Percentile ranks express the percent of test takers who scored below a particular score. Percentile ranks are anchored to the test score's normative distribution rather than to a normal curve. The percentile ranks will match the NCE percentiles when the test normative distribution is also a normal distribution. Remember, it's not always the case that skills are normally distributed in the population. As we saw before, when skills develop with age, it is frequently the case that skills are not normally distributed. There are lots of examples of this that impact the normative distributions for both children and adults. For example, grammatical morpheme use does not distribute normally except around age three. This is when children are about halfway to full acquisition of these linguistic units. After age five, most typical children have acquired all grammatical morphemes, making the skill distribution skewed towards the high end. The scores of normal adults, given an aphasia test, are typically skewed to the highest scores possible for the test. They show practically no range of test scores because their language is fully developed and intact. Therefore, it's perfectly normal, shall we say, for some skills to have a normative distribution that is not normally distributed.
the consequences of the skewing of the scores is that as skills are acquired, the bulk of the scores in the normative distribution are shifting relative to the mean score. However, percentile ranks are insensitive to how skewed the distribution is. All percentile ranks reflect the percentage of test takers whose scores fall below the particular score obtained by your test taker. A percentile rank of 50% is assigned when half the test takers score below a given score, regardless of the skew of the underlying distribution. This is different from NCE percentiles. For those, the 50th percentile would always be at the mean, regardless of whether 50% of the actual scores fell below the mean. As we can see here, applying the assumptions of a normal distribution to a non-normal distribution can lead to some fairly poor fits. Depending on the underlying normative distribution, an NCE percentile of 50% can be quite discrepant from where 50% of the actual scores fall. This is not just theoretical. Let us look at another example from the tills. Nonword spelling is a subtest that we would naturally expect to show a skewed distribution at various points in development. We would not expect children just entering school at age 6 to be able to spell many words that they had never encountered before. Indeed, this subtest is not even normed at age 6 for that reason. However, we begin to see that children are able to spell increasingly well as they progress through school. These are actual data taken from the TILS for the non-word spelling subtest. Although the TILS provides percentile ranks rather than NCE percentiles, I've included both here so you can see the relationship between them at different ages. First, look at the raw score column. The average raw score for this age is 5. One standard deviation above the mean corresponds to a raw score of 23 and one standard deviation below the mean corresponds to a raw score of 2. At this age, there is a distribution in the raw scores, but you can see that it is fairly skewed. There are 17 raw scores between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, and only two raw score points between the mean and one standard deviation below. Now look at the relationship between the standard scores and the NCE percentile scores. The NCE percentile scores line up exactly as we would expect based on the standard scores. A mean of 10 corresponds to an NCE percentile of 50. A standard score of 13, or one standard deviation above the mean, is an NCE percentile of 84 and 7, or one standard deviation below the mean, is an NCE percentile of 16. This is because both standard scores and NCE percentile scores convert raw scores to reflect the properties of a normal curve. Now look at the difference between NCE percentiles and the percentile ranks. The mean standard score of 10 by definition aligns with the NCE percentile of 50, and this is actually pretty close to the percentile rank of 49. However, we see that a standard score of 13 is a percentile rank of 99, and the NCE percentile is only 84. This is because a raw score of 13 is actually rare at this age, when children are still acquiring sound symbol correspondence and regular spelling conventions. Because of this, the NCE percentiles and the percentile ranks diverge at this age. We also see a smaller discrepancy at a standard score of 7, where the NCE percentile is higher than the percentile rank. This indicates that the normative distribution is skewed towards the lower scores relative to the normal distribution. Looking at age 10, we see the same relation between the standard scores of 13, 10, and 7 and the NCE percentiles of 84, 50, and 16. However, things have changed since age 7 in terms of the percentile ranks. At age 10, children's spelling scores are much more normally distributed. We can see this in the relatively even distribution of the raw scores. As a result, we see a closer correspondence overall between the NCE percentile scores and the percentile ranks at this age.
These scores are not identical, but they are much closer than they were at age seven. To conclude, we have several take home points. First, NCE percentiles and percentile ranks communicate different forms of information. NCE percentiles translate standard scores into percentiles. As such, the information provided by these two scores is functionally equivalent. Percentile ranks communicate the percentage of actual scores in the normative distribution that are lower than a given score. These two types of percentiles are equivalent if and only if the normative distribution is also normally distributed. Care needs to be taken in the interpretation of NCE percentiles to avoid misrepresenting them as a position of an individual score relative to other scores in the normative sample. Likewise, care needs to be taken that percentile ranks are not misinterpreted as positions along a normal distribution.